this video we are going to cover what is annotation right so annotation as you know the word name is nothing but marking different section for example if you have a standard book you while reading you are underlying some section and putting the notes on the side or below the page right so that is called annotation so what is annotation for the molecular data for example if you have a gene sequence so you have to define from uh, base pair 1 to base pair 24 is a primer binding site then comes the transcription start point then comes the exon 1 then intron exon 2 intron 2 so this kind of thing is called annotation right so we will see what annotation is and how to annotate your genome so all these points we are going to cover uh, before uh, summarizing all about the gen bank submission so how to properly annotate the genome or the gene that you have sequenced and then how to submit uh, those annotated tracks to the gen bank so all these points will be covered in this uh, video so what is annotation annotation is nothing but labeling certain regions of your sequenced gene as functional which gene it con uh, codes for if there is intron then if, uh, you know this is intron so if some region is exon then this is exon so some region is the transcription binding factor binding site then you have to label it so right primer binding site so different sections of your sequenced gene labeling this section is nothing but the annotation right so easiest way to annotate is to copy the annotation tracks from another well annotated sequence from the gen bank the homologous sequence so first you do a blast search and download the complete sequence with the annotation tracks and copy the track from one region to another after aligning so that is a very crucial step so the steps is the first step is blast your consensus sequence to download the full sequence of the top 20 hits. So the full sequence is very important. If you are simply downloading the incomplete sequence uh, or the only the, se the faster sequence, it will not have the annotation track. So you have to enable the full, that means the complete GenBank file you will have to download inside Genius. Then align these sequences and then copy annotations from one annotated sequence to your consensus sequence which doesn't have the annotation so this method is the best option so as you can see here i have two sequences one has no annotation while the second one has this annotation track so i choose the one which has the annotation tracks i right click then i click here the annotation and copy the annotation to consensus sequence or my sequence clitoria ternaceae rpcl so i can just choose that way so this is the easiest way instead of starting from scratch on annotating the functional region so then you can refine this alignment you see so this is a very good heuristic it saves a lot of your time so finally you have your sequence with you know clearly labeled its one spacer from 1 to uh, you know 185 then 186 onwards it is 5.8 sr rna that is a structural rna then comes the internal uh, transcribed spacer number 2 so this kind of annotation is very important and if you are simply submitting your sequence to a gen bank without annotation then usually the utility of that sequence is lost you know you have to make sure that your sequences are completely annotated before submitting to the gen bank you can add more information as well for example geographical location from where exactly you have isolated this from and who collected it who identified this species and what is a specimen voucher id so specimen voucher id means an id of a voucher specimen for example a herbarium sheet uh, deposited in a accessible repository like a national herbarium so this number is very important if you are working with taxonomical data so most of the taxonomists oversee this point and simply submit without a fully annotated sequence without any of this information which is uh, not a good practice at all you can also specify collection date so the point is that this database you're opening whatever the knowledge that you generated to the world so let others make use of your sequences you know that is the point knowledge sharing don't curtail your knowledge only to your lab and your work so don't be too selfish you know so those kind of putting uh, sequences to the gen bank is of no use it will it might help you to get a paper and get a you know get a job or if you're already uh, working it might help you to get a promotion but it will not help anyone else in the world right so be more generous and be more scholarly by carefully annotating your sequences while submitting to the gen bank so it can be all this information can be added on the info tab 
while submitting to the GenBank, you see, in the sub submission section inside the Genius software that you used. So multiple sequence, including hundreds of sequence, can be se uh, selected and submitted in one go. So it saves a lot of your time by batch submission mode of the Genius software. So for example, this is my sequence. I can simply click on the info tab and then I can add all this information. For example, molecular type, which is my organism, topology, nodes, country, what is my specimen voucher ID that is nothing but herbarium sheet. Or if you have formalin preserved sample that you submitted to a natural history museum. So you can put the museum curated accession number if you're working with animals, you see. Or if you're working with uh, microbes, so what is the type culture ID of the standard, for example, Limtec, uh, you know, in India or uh, ATCC uh, in the UTAX, for example, if you're working with uh, uh, microalgae. And the sequence value identified by who identified the sequence or who identified the species rather. When did you collect this, this particular specimen and who collected it? What is the specimen voucher? All this information you can add it before submitting to the GenBank. So if you have already submitted the GenBank, to update this information is a hell lot of job. And that cannot be done batch wise. So it's always better to do all this information at first before submitting to the GenBank. Right? So how to submit to the GenBank is actually very simple if you're working with Genius. You can batch submit even thousands of genes at one go in few clicks you can submit it. So that it's well annotated genes are already in the GenBank rather than submitting one by one. It, it, it takes up a lot of your time and efforts. So that's I will never recommend this if you're working with the DNA barcoding. Right? Especially if you're working with lots of sequences, DNA barcoding, uh, you know, high throughput DNA barcode, it's always better to submit all in one go after careful annotation. I usually maintain a checklist. Did I do this step, second step, third step? So if the checklist is all done, then I submit the sequence to GenBank. So such a simple practice like maintaining a checklist is extremely important for ensuring the quality standard. Never overlook such simple concept like the checklist friends. So only sequence with length more than 200 base pair can be submitted to the GenBank. So GenBank has this restriction 200 base pair. Well, if you have very small sequence like 50 uh, baby length or 100 baby length, it's of no use really, you know, uh, because the E value is ex exceptionally high. Right, so it is of no practical utility. So only that uh, good quality and uh, longer sequences you can submit that to the GenBank. So for shorter sequence, other databases like Eyeball, so nothing but uh, you know International Barcode of Life database can be used. Uh, you know, if you are really particular on submitting, but I suggest you, if your quality is really bad, don't submit it. You try to refine it. You can resequence it before submitting the GenBank. So sequences has to be fully annotated before submitting. That I re-emphasize this point again because if you submit without proper annotation tracks, then updating this info, there is no way you can batch update it. You have to email to the GenBank, and this will take eats up lots of your time, productive time. Otherwise, you can use it for better work. You know. And submission to the GenBank can be done within the genus, so it's really powerful. So, you know, and multiple sequences, even hundreds, can be submitted together inside the genus. But don't, uh, you know, abuse this option by simply submitting the crap sequence to the GenBank. Anybody can submit any sequence, but such crap sequences, no one makes use of it, right? Unless it is completely annotated. So, annotation is important. So, maintaining the proper quality standard is extremely important. So this is how if I choose lots of sequence, all I have to click here is tools, then submit to the GenBank in the next screen, it will show you what is the submission name and all this project name, specimen, voucher value. If you, you know, if uh, you are using the same voucher number, uh, at least the few alpha numeral decimals common amongst it, you can specify it. Then who identified by collector by what is the molecular type. So some uh, sections are common for all of your thousands of sequences, right? Some sections are unique for each one. Only those regions you can edit it uh, with each sequence data. For example, uh, exact date of collection or uh, you know the species name. This can be different, right? 
or if you're working with phylogeography for example this paper was a phylogeography paper so i know that all my sample thousands of my sequences are all ficus bengalensis so i don't have to change it so hierarchically you can uh, organize your you can you can, you can apply your common sense uh, which uh, level to constrain your data right so here i can constrain that all my sequences are ficus bengalensis and country all these are same organism then genetic code so here it is organism right so which organism include the features and annotation definitely you have to include the annotation tracks also include annotation in the track and include the quality score again that is very important if the researcher uh, you know it enable the researcher if the, they have their own standard for example so a researcher uh, decides that he will use or she will use only the those sequences with 99 percentage hq level so to decide whether my sequences are useful to her then she will have to have an information about hq's quality of my sequences right so for that you really have to enable this internal quality scores right and then just click on the the ok button to submit all the sequences to the gen bank so in summary annotation is very important so unannotated sequences are rarely useful and always annotate sequences meticulously before submitting to the gen bank or any other dna or protein databases